Johnson is originally from Assembly Hall or Sibling Church. However, he currently serves as the Minister of Students at Friendship Baptist Church in Sykesville, Maryland in the United States, just outside of Washington, DC. Uncle Neville, as he is affectionately known as, is very involved in the ministry in Jamaica. He brings teams from his church every year to serve at the NEMCO summer camp in the summer and also to serve at the leadership retreat at Midland in October. He is married to Kerry and they have two boys, Nathan and Noah. Right now, we just wanna welcome our own Uncle Neville as he shares with us what God has laid on his heart. Thank you so much, Uncle Neville, and welcome. Thank you very much, Ariel. And I wanna thank the elders and believers at Galilee Gospel Hall for giving me this opportunity to serve with you guys this morning. And it is a joy for me to serve with you. And you know, we thank God for technology that even though we're not able to meet in person, we can still meet like this. And technology, when it works, is great. You know, and then you have a week like last week, you know, and, and you know, it was just affected everybody all over the world. But nonetheless, we give God thanks. We are able to meet again this morning. Why don't you close your eyes and join me as we look to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you, God, for this another day that you have made. We thank you, God, that we have opportunity to be like this, gathered different parts of the world, but still able to lift up your name. We pray for clarity. Now, God, as your word goes forth, that you would just break it down, make it as simple as possible so everyone can hear and everyone can understand. And may you get the glory. Pray these things in your name. Amen. 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 I said that I do serve at camp in Jamaica in the summer. And I remember the year was 2012. And uh, we, as we normally do, each year at camp, we take our senior campers off site to serve in a, in it could be a boy's home. Sometimes we go just different places to go and serve. And in 2012, we were in St. Mary and we went to the St. Mary infirmary to serve. And our, our, our responsibilities for the day was to do some grooming of the residents, do some serving to help serve lunch and also some socializing and a, a, a little cleaning. And as, as we got on, on the site and as I was walking around, I met the matron and she was taking me around, just giving me a tour. And as she was giving me a tour, we came up on a notice board and a sign on that notice board grabbed my attention. It said, to love God is to serve others. To love God is to serve others. And it grabbed my attention because I, I was thinking as we were moving around and I looked at this major and she couldn't have been more than, I don't know, 30, early 30s. And I don't think I'd be too way out if I said she was probably late 20s. But I thought about it and I was wondering, wow, she doesn't look that old. And I don't know if you know about these uh, infirmaries. They're for the indigent and the destitute. As a matter of fact, the, the, the elders among us, the older folks among us will tell you that they actually use the, the poor house. And so and the, the conditions there are not great. They are not the best. But I was so impressed with this fairly young person here in a capacity here that not many people her age would be serving in. But it struck me. It struck me right there and then why, you know, as I asked the question, why, how come is she serving here? Then it struck me, love for God, love for others. Love for God, for others. And as you about 
our love for God this morning, I want to ask us, well, how is that being displayed in our lives? It's easy to say we love God. But how do we love God? We let this be seen in deed and in truth. Well, in Psalm 100 and verse 2, the psalmist says we should serve the Lord with gladness. And I want to ask you this morning, how is your service? How is your service? Maybe you're serving the Lord, but how is it? Are you serving the Lord with gladness? And may I submit to you this morning that every Christian should serve the Lord with gladness. Every Christian should serve the Lord with gladness. Well, well, what does that mean? And what does that look like in our daily lives? To understand what it means to serve the Lord with gladness, we first of all have to have a perspective, have to understand what a theology of service looks like. And what do we mean when we say a theology of service? The question is, when you serve, well, who are you doing it for? Who are you doing it for? It's like our young people who are leading the service this, leading in the service this morning. You know, when you think about it, you ask the question, well, you know, you're not doing it for Uncle David. You're not doing it for Dilla. And as wonderful a man as Uncle Arnold is, you're not doing it for him either. The question is, well, who are you doing it for? You know what? You are doing it for God. You are doing it for God. So we understand that, and that's why the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 30, 31, therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Do all to the glory of God. So that's what it means to, to, to have a theology of service, understanding who it is that we are serving when we go out and serve. Now, well, how do you serve God with gladness? How do you serve God with gladness? Well, I'm glad you asked, because I'd like us to explore that this morning. I'd like to share with us from scriptures of a few guidelines that will help us to understand what it means or how it is that we serve the Lord with gladness. First of all, if we are going to serve the Lord with gladness, we must serve as an act of our worship. We must, we must serve as an act of our worship. Well, in Ephesians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul, as he was writing to, to the he said, he explained to them, first of all, from verse, verses 1 to 3, what they were before they met Jesus Christ. Then he, he he told them what God did for them in that God saved them by his grace. And then he comes to verse 10 and he says, For we are his masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand in order that we should walk. Well, what's Paul trying to say here? Well, first of all, let's understand what this verse is. When, when he says that we are God's masterpiece, that word masterpiece is a, 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 a word, is the word from which we get our English word poem. What it means is that we are a work of art. We are a work, as believers in Jesus Christ, we are a work of art. And we are created in Christ Jesus. The word created there means something that only God can do. So, let me hear. So, we are God's masterpiece, God's work of art, and God is doing in our lives something that only He can do. He's doing something that only He can do. What Paul's trying to say here as he goes on next, he says, Hey, so we are created in Christ Jesus. He said, For good works which God prepared beforehand that we walk in them. Now, the good works don't save us, but we are by grace through faith. But after we are saved, you know what? 
we are expected to, the, to do these good works. So first of all, Paul is saying, hey, we are saved to serve. We are saved to serve. That is why he says, hey, you're, you're created in Christ Jesus for good works. So you and I are saved to serve. And if you are a Christian and you are not serving, you, are, you aren't performing as you are supposed to. You are not doing what God created you to do. But maybe you are serving. Maybe you are serving, but you don't, you don't see it as an act of your worship. Well, if you don't see it as an act of your worship, there is no way you can do it with gladness. And when the psalmist says to serve the Lord with gladness, what he means is that we should do it joyfully. We should do it joyfully. How, are, how is your service? Are you doing it joyfully? Well, first of all, do you see it as an act of your worship? You see, the mistake that we, we, we make, we think worship is just what happens on Sunday mornings when we get up in church and we start to sing. No, that's just one act of our worship. The singing is just one act of our worship. Because worship, my friends, is a lifestyle, an attitude, which means as a believer in Jesus Christ, you and I should always have this lifestyle of worship. That is why Paul says, in whatever you do, you should do it to God's glory. If you do it to God's glory, then it becomes an act of worship because you are doing it to, to praise God, not doing it for yourselves but doing it to praise God. So not only are we to understand that we are saved to serve, but Paul says that these good works that God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them, what Paul is saying is that, hey, it is God who is working in us, and it is God who is working through us. It is God who is working in us, and it is God who is working through us. You and I are a work in progress, okay? It is God, as we study God's word, as we read the word, as we study it, as we meditate on it, as we allow it to take root in our lives, and God is doing something in our lives that he's changing us little by little so that we can become more like Jesus Christ each and every day. And that is something that only God can do in our lives. And as he changes us, what he's doing now, he, he's also working through us when we do these good works that he's prepared beforehand for us to do. In Philippians 2, 13, Paul says, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. It is God who works in you to do for his good pleasure. So my friends, you and I were created to serve God. And we show our love for God by serving others. And you know, during this time of, of the coronavirus, many of us are probably wondering, well, how can I serve God? And we may think, well, church is closed. So I guess I don't, I can't serve God when church is closed. Not true. There are lots of different ways and lots of different things that we can do to serve God during, during this time. Maybe you're a young person. You may ask yourself the question, hey, there are a lot of a lot of folks in the congregation. What about going to the supermarket for them? What about doing something for them that they are not able to do at, to do at this time? That's something that, that you can do. Or Maybe God has given you gifts and skills and abilities, and as the church is uh, streaming or, or, or putting their messages online, maybe you have some hidden talent that we don't know about. You don't have to wait for someone to, to ask. Volunteer, serve, show that, hey, this is how I love God, and I, am one, I want to show that, God, you know what? I don't want to just say, I love you just in words, but I want it to come out in deeds as well. Someone says that some pastors treat the church 
as if it is a nonprofit organization that depends on volunteers to, to survive. That's not what the church is. It's not a nonprofit that depends on volunteers to survive. The church is made up of people who God has given gifts and abilities, and those gifts and abilities are to be used to serve God and to serve others. Hebrews reminds us, do not forget to do good and to share for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. You see, when we see our service as worship, then we will be able to do it with gladness. And when we do these good works with gladness, then God gets the glory. God gets the glory. So how do we serve the Lord with gladness? See our worship or our service as an act of worship. Secondly, how do we serve the Lord with gladness? Well, we serve without complaining. We serve without complaining. In Philippians 2:14, Paul, he was exhort, you know, giving the believers some examples of Christian living. And he says to, to them, do all things without complaining and disputing to do all things without complaining and disputing. Now, the translation of the word complaining comes from a word that has to do with a bad attitude or grumbling. If you are going to give God the glory in everything that you do, then when you serve and you start complaining or you have a bad attitude, we have to ask ourselves the question, well, how does God get the glory when my attitude is bad? How does God get the glory when my attitude is bad? My friends, God doesn't get the glory in that. You see, we need to, to understand that those who serve the Lord, they should be known for their humble service. Their humble service. See? Complaining has to do with the grumbling and a bad attitude, but disputing has to do with arguing. So here's how it works. You see, once you start complaining, then it will lead to arguing. Think about this. You're having vacation Bible school at church, and people say they want to serve. And they show up, and from the minute they show up, they start complaining about every single thing. They complain about the time you start. They complain about the Bible lessons. They complain about the teachers. They complain about the space. And when it comes to snack time, they complain about the snacks as well. And you ask the question, why are they complaining so much? Why are they complaining so much? And a lot of the times when they complain, it's only about personal preferences. It has nothing, it's nothing theological, nothing biblical, but just that they would rather do it this way. But ask yourself the question, how does God get the glory in that? Who am I doing it for? Who am I doing it for? Am I doing it for God? You see, when you start complaining, you will keep complaining and complaining. You'll always find something to complain about. And you know what? If there's nothing to complain about, you will make up something to complain about. And God doesn't get the glory in that. See, those who serve the Lord should be known for their humble service, not their quarrelsome attitude. But also, when we serve without complaining, arguing, it not only give God, gives God the glory, but it shows that we are united in our efforts. It not only gives God the glory, but it shows that we are united in our efforts. In verses 15 and 16 here in this Philippians passage, Paul says that, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without faults in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. My friends, you see, the church 
is God's agent in the world. The church is God's agent in the, in the world, and unbelievers will know that we are Christians by our love for God and for each other. That's what Jesus Christ said in John 13, 34, and 35 to his disciples. Okay, they'll know that we belong to Jesus Christ by our love for each other. So how is your service? How is your service? Are you a complainer? Are you doing it for your own glory? See, because if you're doing it for God, then the complaints will start to lessen and lessen and lessen. And if we're honest enough, I'm sure all of us can speak of a time when we complained. I know there was a time when I complained too. But that's not what God calls us to, to, to do. He calls us to serve with a good attitude. Stop the complaining. Stop the arguing. The complaining just leads to arguing and then it causes division in the church. So how is your service? How is your service? Are you serving the Lord with gladness? Do you see your service as an act of your worship? Are you serving without complaining? Well, how else can we serve the Lord with gladness? The ultimate, my friends, is to serve like Jesus, to serve like Jesus Christ. In Matthew 20, verses 28, Jesus said to his disciples, just of the son of, just, excuse me, as the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. See what had happened is that the mother of James and John Jesus and asked that her sons be set one on the left, one on the right. And Jesus put that to bed quick, pretty, pretty, pretty early. But then the rest of the disciples, they, they heard about it and they started complaining too. I mean, they, 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 they didn't like it. And Jesus had to pull them together. And here is Jesus' point. Hey, you want to know what greatness is? He says, don't be like the Pharisees, the, 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 the Gentiles, who they are looking for positions of authority so that they can just lord it over people. He says, that shouldn't be your, your attitude. Your attitude should be one of just wanting to serve. He says, the goal for the Christian is serving. The goal should be serving, not ruling not ruling with what, what's jesus saying hey don't run for these positions don't try to get these positions just wherever you are you serve god right you serve god right there so whatever it is that god has called you to hey if your job in the church is just to walk around after church is finished turn off the equipment do it to the best of your ability. If your job is just to walk around and pick up hymn books and buy, do it to the best of your ability. If you're on the committee and you're not the president or the chairperson, it's okay because there are some people who they won't serve in certain committees unless they are in charge. There's some guys, some girls, they won't play on certain teams unless they are the captain. They are calling the shots. But that's not what God's calling us to do. You see, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, if you want to serve like Jesus, then we don't have to seek positions or seek positions of authority. We understand that we are just here to serve. See, when we serve like Jesus, we don't seek positions and authority. We just serve. We just serve. Jesus is our ultimate example. You remember when he was on earth, he kept saying, I must do the works of him who sent me. I am about my father's business. I have to do the will of him who sent me. And if we want to be more like Jesus Christ, if we're allowing God to work in our lives, then we have to learn to serve like Jesus. And not only, so one, it means 
her. Don't look for rule to try to rule. Secondly, it means just serve wherever God has called you. It means don't seek positions. You just serve in whatever position it is God has called you. Serve sacrificially. How is your service? Those that you serve, do they see Jesus coming out in you? Well, the story is told of a, a woman in Australia who, she was fired from her job. She was fired from her, her job because they said, they said she wasn't doing what she was paid to do. Well, you want to hear what she, she did? All right. In August 2010, this lady by the name of Elsie in Melbourne, Australia, she was fired because she was too courteous. She was too courteous. She was a security guard. Her superiors wrote, due to your caring and giving nature, you are compromising your position as a security officer. Being caring and giving is not a requirement, nor is it what you are paid to do. And she was transferred to a new position nearby. You see, most people aren't fired because they are too nice. They're fired because they are not nice enough. You see, that's what, that's what the world sees it as being nice enough. But in Christendom, when you serve, you see it as you serving like Jesus has called you to serve. Jesus Christ says, in a through love, Paul said rather to the believers, the Galatian believers, through love, serve one another. Through love, we're to serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If serving is about glorifying God, my friends, then it doesn't matter what position we have. It doesn't matter where we serve. And this service is not only in the church, because if worship is an attitude, a lifestyle, then it extends to work. It extends to school, it extends to the football field, wherever we are. Wherever we are, if we do it to God's glory, then it is worship. It is worship. And a lot of times the people who are seeking positions of authority they're seeking it for one reason and one reason only. They want to be in the position so they can be in charge and treat people the way they were treated. But that's not what God is calling us to do. He's calling us to serve like Jesus Christ. And I ask you this morning, how's your, how's your service? Are you serving in church? Are you thinking, shh, I'm tired of it? Are you thinking, well, I'm just doing this or I'm just doing that? No, you're not just doing this. You are to serve to the best of your ability, to serve, to use the gifts that God has given you. No better way to show God that you love him than in the way you serve him. If you don't do it to God's glory, there will be no joy. No joy. Or maybe you're in a position at work and you're thinking, I just can't wait to get out of here. Or you're, you're doing it just because, hey, for you, you're auditioning for the next job. You can't wait to move on. But my friends, so many times in our lives, we think we just want to move on. We want a change of scenery. scenery. But what we need is not really a change of scenery, but it is a change of seeing things. And if right now you're in a position where you're serving and you just can't wait to get out of there, what you need is for God to get a hold of you. See, there's, some, there's a little gadget called a, a glow stick. And a glow stick, it usually, it doesn't come like that in a ring or in rings. It's usually straight. But in order for the glow stick 
to work as it's supposed to because people use it at camps and the military they use it when you buy the glow sticks it's usually straight and it's clear you can't but in order to get it to work, you have to break it. When you break it and you make it into a ring or whatever object, then it starts to glow. My friend, that's what you and I need in our lives, for God to get a hold of us and to break us so we can glow and we can do what it is that he, had called us, he has called us to do. So this morning, are you serving with gladness? Are you seeing your service as an act of worship? Are you seeing it? Are you serving without complaining? Are you serving like Jesus Christ? It is my prayer for us this morning that as we've looked at God's word, that something said here this morning might cause a spark in your life, might cause you to think about your service to God. No better way to show your love for Jesus Christ by the way you serve. Here this morning, and you are not a Christian. Maybe you are not a Christian. And you don't understand what it means to really serve God with gladness. I get this straight, because if you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, everything you do, it's for your own glory. It doesn't matter how much of a philan philanthropist you are, everything is for your own glory. But if you want to give God the glory, first of all, you have to open your heart to God and say, Lord, I want you to lead me. I want you to make a difference in my life. Oh, oh, oh.